Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of the Autopilot version 2018 42.219E7E44. So this is the test that everybody's really been waiting on. There has been a lot of movement in the uh, Tesla firmware and Autopilot front in the last month or so. The V9 update was obviously a huge update for everybody. And now, finally, we have the wide release that came out on Friday. I got my Monday evening of the new Navigate on Autopilot feature. So I am heading out to lunch as usual. And the first thing that I'm also showing off, so I am going to actually split out uh, some views of the MCU because it is relevant to the discussion this time out. Let's see how we do on stopped car. Stopped car, there you go. <laughs> it's a little later than I would have liked, but still well within what I felt safe with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get onto the highway here. So I programmed in a destination that's a few exits down the highway. I do have, as part of my configuration, use HOV lane, so I want to see what it does with that. But I also, as you can see, have both my media controls and now camera, and now you sort of, it's not exactly like the same as what you used to have before, where you can just pick an app at the top and pick an app at the bottom. But now you can have the media controls in the bottom, and based on the size of the media controls, you can push your camera up towards the top, basically, Oops, or actually just push it completely out, as I did right there, which is not ideal. So, in order to bring this feed back, Alright, so I apologize to the MCU view because that's a little tablet arm mounted camera. It's not great, um, but I'm not going to leave it up for the majority of the time. So, now I'm on the highway. I will turn on autopilot. Now let the navigate on autopilot button. And now let's watch what happens. So I get the little multi-chime that's new, uh, and now it looks like the, old, the original V9 display, except now I also have this blue line. Now I kind of want to see what happens. So I've told it to use HOV lane, but it's not getting me over into the HOV lane, possibly because there aren't any cars in front of me at the moment. And if it doesn't get me over, because I don't want to speed too much just to catch up with those cars. You can put the car in a situation where it feels like it needs to pass. I wish the traffic were actually a little bit heavier so we can sort of test those. Because one thing I'm curious to see is I would like to see if the car will get over into the left lane if the cars ahead of me in the right lane are going slower than what I have my speed currently set at. So right now I'm in the right lane. I'm going 70 miles an hour which is a reasonable speed for a 65 mile an hour zone which is what I'm in. Um, but unfortunately, pretty much everybody's coming faster than me, including the people in the right lane. So um, I don't know if I'm going to have the opportunity to test this aspect of it on this particular drive, but I get the feeling that this is going to be the first of many drives that I'm going to do with this autopilot version. Now, what the highway is going to do up here is it's actually going to split out into more lanes. So while I'm in the right-hand lane now, I will not be in the right-hand most lane once I get a little bit further down. So the car, in order to take the exit that it wants to take, is going to have to get over one lane from where I am right now, um, and then take the exit. And this particular exit also does not have its own dedicated lane. So in order to be able to successfully exit, the car is going to have to just take the exit, essentially, on its own. Now, I've done some testing with this already, and I'm happy to report that the car actually does do this. Um, you don't need to have a dedicated exit lane, because this is something that the previous versions of Autopilot like, had no concept of, was the ability just to, to take an exit, um, as opposed to getting into an exit lane. In the old versions of Autopilot, you could use Auto Steer and Auto Steer driver-initiated lane change to get over into an exit lane, and then the car would successfully exit. But it wouldn't just be able to, to take an exit that doesn't have a dedicated lane. All right, so I see the exit coming up. So I'm waiting for a suggestion from autopilot. I'm slowing down because this truck ahead of me is going slow. Hopefully it's not going to dump gravel and rocks on me. Oh, you know what? Actually, sorry, I spoke too soon. Autopilot has a different idea of how I should get to where I'm going for lunch. I take this exit. Autopilot apparently does not. So I guess we're going to the next exit. That's fine. So I'm going to see what we'll do. Alright, so we're going 60. 
behind this car. It's not getting me over, but at the same time, like the exit is going to be coming up here pretty soon. Um, so see, I, I see on the GPS that it's indicating that uh, I should be in the right-hand most lane. Uh, I'm not seeing a suggestion yet. Waiting for that suggestion. And at this point, okay. So I would have missed the exit there, actually. Um, and I've seen this happen before. I think what happens is even though the car can see that there is an adjacent lane to my right, it thinks I'm already in the right hand most lane. So it thought I was going to exit right there from the lane that I was in, which unfortunately I was not. So I had to go ahead and take over. Um, in the, I've only done one drive with the autopilot on nav before this. And in the previous drive, I did see that happen on an exit. Uh, it was not this particular exit. So I don't know if that's caused by GPS data or, um, or what the influencing factor is. Like even if the GPS data thinks that I'm all the way over in the right lane, because I mean, there are obviously there, there are accuracy issues with GPS and it only, it only goes to so much detail. Um, I would hope that the adjacent lane display would be smart enough to say, hey, there's another lane to my right. I should probably be in that lane if that's the lane I need to be in in order to exit the highway. So yeah, kind of interesting result, but what we'll do is um, I'll do another test on the way back, basically doing the exact same thing, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So catch you in a sec. All right, time for take two of our autopilot, or navigate on autopilot experiment. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll turn on navigate on autopilot, which does nothing at the moment because I am on a local road. So we'll just follow the AP until we get to our highway on-ramp, which is just around the corner here. Hopefully we don't get stopped at any lights. We can watch this local road. Ah, see, I jinxed it. And here I take over because autopilot will just run this red light if I let it, because it does not deal with red lights. In fact, nor will it ever, because that's going to be a full self-driving feature. Red lights and four-way stops or any kind of stop sign. That's getting into full self-driving rather than enhanced autopilot, at least according to the information that Tesla had released up until this point. So, continuing from part one, um, part one was not successful at um, taking the exit. I think it believed that it was in the exit lane when it was, in fact, one lane over. Uh, and then it started to try to exit right around the point where the exit began. So, in terms of knowing where the exit began, like, it was spot on for that. Um, but in terms of, unfortunately, the rest of it, uh, it just didn't get over into the correct lane. Now, interestingly enough, that's the second time that I've seen it do that. Um, but the weird thing about this is, the thing that I have seen it do better is the thing that it literally has never done before, which is the ability to simply exit when there's a highway exit that doesn't necessarily have its own dedicated lane. When you're in a lane and all of a sudden there's an additional branch going off to the right where you can hop off the highway, like it does a fine job of that, at least in the, the testing that I've done so far. So interesting because I would have expected that getting over into a dedicated exit lane would have been the easier use case for it. Um, but for some reason it's having a harder time of that's a case or it's a carcass of a cardboard tube, but still a carcass nonetheless. Alright. So, navigate on autopilot. I've turned it on 70 miles an hour. I'm letting it handle this lane merge. Yep, figure that out. Yep, didn't need to. Yes, yeah, so I will confirm because we want to get out of this exit lane. It realizes that I'm in an exit lane. Very nice. Good job there. And let's see what it does. Now, the place that I'm going to, this time coming back onto the highway, I actually exited the exit that I would have originally taken to go to lunch. Uh, kind of interesting though, so as I mentioned in the first part of this video, the GPS has a different idea of what the best way to get to where I was going for lunch was. There are two exits that you can exit. I take the first exit, GPS tends to take the second exit. In this particular instance, it's a six of one, half dozen the other sort of situation. I don't think it really matters which exit you take. I have my preference, which is to get off the highway first and then take local roads. But it does, now that we're getting into things like navigate on autopilot, start to highlight the need for additional features such as waypoints in your GPS navigation. 
um, you know, the more autonomous the car becomes, the more important it's going to become to be able to give the car more detailed instructions about where it is you're going and maybe even how to get there, because there's just going to be information that the driver might be privy to that the GPS simply might not be, even with enhanced traffic information and construction information coming over in real time. There may be reasons why you simply want to avoid a particular area or go to another particular area or take a particular highway exit. So, once again, pretty light traffic in the middle of the day. Um, I'm going 70 miles an hour in the right lane. I'm being passed by pretty much everybody. So, one of the things that I was kind of curious to check out, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get a chance to see, which is, what would the car do if I'm in the right lane and I approach a car that is going noticeably slower than I am? And based on the relative speed of the car that I see in front of me, the car to my left, and how far we are from the exit that the GPS should be trying to take, um, I don't think we're going to get a chance to check that out this time, but we'll do that in a subsequent video. So, I'm approaching the exit, and I think this is another exit that has a dedicated exit lane, but yeah, it's it's funny because you just you drive these roads so often you, you become familiar with them. This isn't the sort of thing that you as a human driver necessarily has to think about on a regular basis. Um, I'm pretty sure this one has a dedicated exit lane, though. So let's see what happens because this is where it made an error before. Now it should know exactly what lane I'm in because when we turned on the autopilot, it knew I was in the exit lane. It had me get over into this lane. So if it needs to get over to the lane in order to be able to take this exit, it has no excuse for not having that information. There's no reason that it shouldn't understand that I need to get over one lane in order to be able to exit this highway. So let's see what happens. And here's my exit lane. Doing the same thing again. All right, I'm going to cross the white line because it didn't see that it needed to get over to that dedicated lane, which is unfortunate because that's two instances where I cross the white line when you're not technically supposed to. Hmm. Okay, uh, I think we need to do some more testing, and I think maybe Tesla needs to do a little bit more revision on this. Like I said before, we're not going to do that in this particular drive because I only have a limited amount of time before I have to get back to work. Um, but I have seen it successfully change or successfully exit the highway in instances where there is not a dedicated lane. But all the instances I've seen it fail have been what I would have considered to be the easier scenario, which is um, instances where there's a dedicated lane that you need to get into because the existing autopilot is capable of doing that. You just need to tell it to get into that lane by manually initiating the lane change. Now, what is interesting on top of that, though, is it was successfully figuring out, like it knew exactly where the exit was. It just didn't get me in a position to be able to actually take that exit. So once I reached the exit, that's when it said, okay, now's the point where you got to start veering left or veering to the right. But um, yeah, in both of these instances, it did not succeed. So, all right, uh, I guess that ends it for this particular video. Um, more testing to come, hopefully more revisions from Tesla since this is literally, since I've gotten this update late last night, the third instance in which I um, attempted to let it take an exit that was on a dedicated lane, and all three times it basically did what it did in these in, twice in this video. Um, but it did succeed where it was just an exit, not a dedicated lane. So I guess we'll have to see. Uh, maybe this is based on GPS information. Maybe this is based on some sort of revision that needs to happen to the autopilot firmware. Um, maybe we'll be getting another version here in like a few days or in a week or so once they realize that there's an issue. Or maybe this is a unique problem that only I'm experiencing and nobody else is having any issue with. Um, but either way, still do more testing. We'll see how it goes. And thanks for watching.